Good evening, everybody. Welcome back, and welcome to part 24 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Today marks the 109th anniversary of Titanic Sea Trials, which happened on the 2nd of April 1912. So I thought it would be appropriate to upload a video to mark the day. Today I'm going to be covering some of the arty farty stuff on B Deck the um, interior decorations and furniture for the Café Parisien and for the private promenades. Uh, and I might also cover a few little other bits and bobs that I've been doing in the interim. So, without any further ado, I'll hand over to myself a couple of weeks ago when I started this and crack on. So the first thing I needed to do, and I probably should have shown this in the last episode actually, was to prepare the superstructure sides. Um, to accept some of the photo etch parts. So in this clip I'm just trimming off some of the excess plastic that I don't need uh, and then in the next clip I am gluing on the photo etch more detailed parts. The next thing I did was to prepare the buildings and walls on B deck by adding any necessary paraphernalia, things like doors and such like this. In this clip I am drilling out holes in the doors so that light will shine through them. Hello, welcome to the shed. Uh, just about to paint my B-deck parts. So we've got the back, uh, private promenades, yeah, there. Uh, Café Parisienne, so on and so on. And I've been trying to work out how best to do these. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to sort of just cover. First was whether I painted the back in black. And I've decided that I'm not going to. The only reason I would have done was 
um, because I'd have been worried about things like light bleeding through, but I'm actually confident that this plastic is thick enough that that isn't an issue. Um, the second thing I was thinking of is the plastic's quite thick, and it took me a long time to decide whether I wanted to paint the inside of these window frames uh, in a brown or a black, because I thought to myself, it might look a bit weird if I've got the actual window frame in this sort of recessed area around the window, and then and the window frame's in brown, and then I've got another white patch behind it. But actually, I've been looking at some photos of other people's models, and I think that looks better than having a different colour behind. It makes the rooms inside look like they're a bit lighter and a bit more airy. Um, so that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, if it turns out to be a bit of a disaster, I can always change it, but for now, that's my plan. The next thing to look at is these. Um, these are little stick-on things for areas of the ship. So for example, this is the Café Parisien. These are the private promenades. And you've got, uh, I think that's a la carte restaurant. Um, staircases and so on, veranda cafe, get the idea, gymnasium, yada yada yada. Um, also these, which are some windows, so you know, you've got things like first class smoking room and lounge and yada 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 again. Uh, now these are free, you can download them off the Facebook group devoted to this model and then print them out yourself. Um, so well worth doing if you fancy adding a bit more detail to your model. The first thing I'm going to do with these is I'm going to spray them front and back with a matte varnish. And this will give them an element of waterproofness. Uh, it probably, it's not going to be impervious to water, you know, if the ship were to sink or something like that, I'm sure they'd be ruined. But these are going to be quite high out of the water. These are going to be on the superstructure, so they really shouldn't be getting wet. Um, and I think for that purpose, this coat of matte varnish will be sufficient. So, as we can see, um, I have allowed the varnish to dry. This is feeling a bit thicker now, almost feels a bit like leather. Um, so I'm going to do the other side as well, uh, and then I'll probably do another coat on this side. As with everything model-wise, much better to do lots of little coats rather than one massive one. Um, and then I will stick it, or rather I'll stick the Café Parisien, onto the section for the Café Parisien. So in this clip, I'm applying one of the private promenade decks to the appropriate wall. Um, it's really important to take your time on this, and I know this it sounds a bit sort of patronising, but it really is worth taking as much time as you possibly can over cutting things out slowly and making sure you get making, making the cuts absolutely square. Um, so for this, I'm using a fairly liberal quantity of Gorilla Glue, the same glue that I've used for the decking. Um, I'm using that because I don't want anything too powerful and I don't want anything with too many chemicals in, and Gorilla Glue is quite chemical friendly, I guess. Um, but I am using a fairly decent quantity of glue because, a bit like the private promenade deck decking itself, this is an area that I will never be able to gain access to again. So the real risk here is the the walls detaching um, and sort of curling up and stuff. So I'd much prefer to have too much glue and the walls to be absolutely stuck in place properly rather than not using enough glue and the walls coming off at a later date.
So I'm now cutting out the window sections on my private promenade so that they can accept the uh, window frames. There's one over there. Uh, and the way I found best to do it is when you hold it up in front of a light, uh, I'm not sure if my camera is going to pick this up very well. When you hold this up in front of a light, you can see the light shining through the window aperture through the paper. And what I've been using is a very, very sharp X-Acto blade. This is a brand new blade straight out of the box um, to cut through whilst looking through the light so that you can see exactly where you need to cut. It's not absolutely precise. You can see that the edges of the paper are slightly rough and ready, but the lovely thing is that when you put the window panes in, it covers over those rough edges. So it, you end up with quite a crisp uh, final effect. So here I'm adding other window frame sections to other parts of B-Deck. Uh, I find using something like blue tack is absolutely invaluable here to um, lift up the really fine photo etch and to place it into the window aperture. What I'm doing in this clip is trimming the windows with a very sharp knife and then adding the window frames. Since fitting these, I have found that I think the window frames on private promenades were actually painted white rather than brown. Um, so if you're going for absolute 100% accuracy, you probably want to differ slightly from what I've shown here. So I'm just doing these parts, um, B6 and B7, just preparing them before gluing. Uh, so these are the sort of wings um, just at the bow on B deck. Uh, and as you can see, the, um, the parts have three windows cut into the sides, but nothing here, and there should be. Um, and without wanting to sound like Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. This is the other side. This is the starboard side. Uh, and I've cut a window into this place here. Um, because there are window frames in the, um, the, the photo etch, uh, the actual window itself doesn't have to be cut super, super accurately because the frame will cover quite a lot of sins, actually, uh, which is really beneficial because it's very, very hard in this sort of scale to cut a perfectly square window. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut this other side uh, and then put the frame on and then these will be ready to glue in place. Aim up. Uh, just gluing these uh, wing pieces for the front of B-deck down. Uh, these are the pieces uh, which I had to cut an additional window in. Here's the other one over there, and it is actually well worth doing when you look at the um, when you look at B deck from right at the front of the bow. You see this window, so it is actually I think I think it's worth doing because it's quite a notable feature that you'd miss. Um, this isn't really in any way structural, so I'm not going to use CA glue. I'm going to use Matamia extra thin cement. Um, not, and that's not to say that the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement isn't strong in any way, but it isn't as strong as CA glue, and I tend to use CA for, for something that's, you know, that I really need to rely on to support the structure of the boat. In this case, it's not so much of an issue, so I can use this glue. And I mean, you know, this is a plastic glue. This is a glue designed for connecting 
plastic parts, so it seems logical to use it. Now there's a slight mistake with the private promenades in this kit, um, as there should be a wall right here. This is the private promenade section here, and if you look on the outside of the ship, you can see through the windows on B-deck, there's your private promenade. But at this point, you've got two gangway doors, and this is actually a first class entrance. Um, and you can see on the inside, entrance doors in a sort of entrance vestibule I guess which then leads onto the B deck grand staircase so <clears throat> it's a slight oversight in the kit uh, and there's no part here but as I say there should be a wall so what I've done is there's um there's two pieces these pieces which I've trimmed down uh, these are I think they're B20 and B21 but they're not used anywhere else on the kit so they're essentially spares um, Advantageously, there's a door on them, and there would have been a door between this entrance vestibule and the private promenade deck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this piece down here, tricky to see with my fingers in the way, and I'm gonna create that separation between the promenade deck and the entrance. So, um, it's just one of those things where it's a little, mistake in the kit it's not major and to be honest even if these parts weren't there any piece of plastic would actually do just fine um, but as there is a piece with a ready molded door in it makes it quite easy and then when you view from the outside you'll be able just to see the private promenade and then the entrance vestibule separate Now, one of the great benefits of having longer hair is that you accumulate hundreds of hair clips, which turn out to be very useful for holding down printouts while they're gluing onto the Café Parisian sections of B-Deck. Now, the windows on the Café Parisian were not brown like most of the rest. Uh, I think in reality they were probably white, um, but just so that they match a little better with the printouts I'm using, I'm using a cream colour, which is Humbrol 103. Right, I'm just making myself some pot plants for the, the private promenades. And what I've done is I've made just out of some scrap plastic some sort of cubes, uh, and these are going to be these are going to become boxes. Uh, and I'm just drilling a hole for each of them in turn. I'm doing four, two for each of the private promenades. Uh, and once they're done, once I've drilled these holes. I'll paint them brown. So I've drilled some small holes in each of these plastic pots and I'm now just inserting a 0.5 brass rod, gluing it in place and then cutting it off to a realistic length for a plant at this scale.
So here's the furniture for the private promenades. Got some sofas, a couple of tables. I am going to add some deck chairs later. And also these, which will later become pot plants. So these are the cubes of plastic that I chopped out earlier with a stalk on them now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some foliage to them. And I'm going to use this stuff. So this is from Woodland Scenics. Uh, and this is really good because uh, I don't quite know how to describe it, but the um, I guess the resolution of the uh, foliage is very, very fine. Um, most of this sort of foliage that you get is designed for double O gauge railways and stuff like that, uh, which I think is 170 second scale. Um, but my model is 1 to 300 scale. So any sort of pre-made bush or something for a double O gauge railway will look hopelessly out of scale. So um, having something with this sort of finer detail in it will be quite useful. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to stab some of this stuff through the branches of these pot plants just to give it a bit of foliage and make it look like there are some pot plants. So I'm going to use Gorilla Glue for this because um, there really isn't any need for CA. Uh, you know, the, it's it's not a um, it's not a sort of high load application at all. So I'm just going to cover the stem in Gorilla Glue. Uh, what I could do with here. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it into this and that then gives me somewhere to work from. So what I'm doing is I'm just ripping off bits of foliage. just sticking them down the stem, like so. Doing a bit of variety on these. I'm not really, I've not really got a sort of plan in my head for this. I'm just sort of seeing what looks decent, if you know what I mean. So um, yeah, we'll see. See what comes out and what looks good. We done the hand a shrubbery. this glue dries clear I am going to be quite liberal with it because I don't really want to have to come back to these at a later point and repair things you know I like these to sort of get stuck in and then forgotten about Something like this is worth doing because it makes, it just gives the ship that sort of air of somewhere that's been lived. You know, you can you can make a model and it can look brilliantly realistic, but if you don't have any people on it, if you don't have any evidence that, that people have actually lived on the thing, I don't think it quite has the same ring of authenticity to it. Um, whereas if you've got things like plants and people and animals and things, 
gives it that sort of lift, makes it a bit more believable, you know? So I think these are worth putting a bit of time and effort into. And to be fair, they didn't even take that long to make. Um, and I think they look quite nice. So, there we are. So I'm just about to add some furniture into my private promenade decks. I've got uh, a nice sofa. In fact, I've got two quite pleasant sofas. Uh, a table and a couple of pot plants for each. I'll also add, in due course, some deck chairs when I get round to actually making them. So I've just popped the first piece of furniture in, one of the sofas. Um, I'm going to avoid this section here because this is a door between the first class entrance and the promenade deck, so you wouldn't have any furniture there, because otherwise the door would be pretty pointless. Uh, so I'm going to pop some furniture, and basically on the other side of the room, pretty much. Uh, I'm not really following any plans on this, I'm just sort of adding furniture as I see fit. Then as I say, I, I will add, once I've got round to actually making them, some deck chairs. So there's a second sofa in the corner this time. one of the plants in place. Plants are tricky because they tend to have good and bad sides, you see. Second pot plant in place. And lastly, the table.
So I'm just starting to build up the Café Parisienne scene um, and I'm about to put, put a couple of people into the scene. Um, now as with everything on the inside of the model, I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with things like glue than I would be normally. And that's, again, because what I'm worried about more than anything here is people coming loose over time and such, which would be frustrating. Uh, so I've been quite liberal with the amount of glue I've used on this chap, um, but I'm sure it'll be all right for the ordeal. And I'm just carrying on like this. So I've already built up the scene, as you can see here. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just taking out chairs as I want to, to add figures into them. So I'm going to add this I'm going to add this sitting woman there. Somewhat fiddly, I would say. But worth it, because this sort of detail is just brilliant. I like it a lot. Relatively liberal with the glue. I mean, these are all pretty secluded views anyway. You're doing well to see into the Cafe Parisian. And really, this is something that you're only going to see if you actually are looking at the model when it's when it's in its case. You're never going to see this sort of detail when it's sailing on the lake obvious reasons it's just far too fine but tricky nonetheless So here's the Café Parisian. Quite happy with it, really. I've tried where possible to make scenes which actually like have a bit of sort of story to them. So for example, you know, here you've got two people who've just come through the doors and are waiting to be seated. You've got a gentleman here raising his hand and a steward or a waiter coming over to serve him. You've got three people here just waiting to sit down, just pulling their chairs back, sitting down. And, you know, a couple over here with a steward just seating them, uh, about to take an order. And similarly, two people who've just finished, about to go out onto the decks. So I've tried where possible to give a bit of a sort of story behind these things, uh, just because I think it makes a bit more sense. Um, of course, the irony of the whole thing is that it's very difficult to see the vast majority of what's going on here. But you do see something, and as I say, I really do feel like this is the sort of thing that makes a model feel a bit more realistic, makes it feel a bit more alive if you can see people within. Um, so I'm really happy with how this has turned out, and I'm hoping I can carry on and make the rest of the rooms as, as good as this one, really, because I'm very happy with how it's been. So that's it for this episode. As you can appreciate, these things take quite a long time to do properly, um, but I'm very happy with the results I've got. The next episode will be on the uh, the interior interiors of B deck things like the Alicar restaurants, um, second class smoking room, 
um, and some of the hallways and corridors that are more visible from the outside of the ship. So that'll be next time, but uh, until then, if you've got any questions or comments, whack them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. Uh, if you have liked this video, um, please give me a like or subscribe, um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.